Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be preparing our model uh, ready to be rigged. Now, what I mean by preparing our model is setting it up so that once we start rigging it, we're not gonna run into any problems um, that we might bump into later on. Uh, so let's get started. First of all, what we're going to do is make sure that our model's normal directions are all facing the correct direction. Now, what is a model's normal directions? Well, you see on our models, we have faces. On our torso, for example, we have a face at the front, one on the side, one on the back. Um, on our head, we have a bunch of faces going around, one on the top, one on the bottom. And with these faces, they each have a direction that they are facing, or more or more so, the, the vertices right here have a direction that they are pointing. Now, it's important when 3D modeling that you don't really have um, inside out 3D models. Now, that might sound obvious, but when we were actually creating this model right here, we do in fact have inside out models. And that occurs when we are flipping them over. When we are setting up the left arm here and the leg over here, we flip them over by um, inversing the X scale, okay? And what that caused is not only to create a mirror copy of it, but in fact, invert it as well. So these normal directions or these models faces are actually pointing to the inside of the model compared to this one on the right, which is pointing outwards. So how can we see that first of all? Because right now they look exactly the same. Well, what we're going to do is we're first of all going to select our model over here. Okay. Um, I'm selecting the arm that we started with, press tab to go into edit mode. And if we go at the top right corner here and click on this arrow, go down and select this face icon underneath normals, okay? And what this is gonna do is basically show the normal direction for each face. And you can, of course, change the size as well here. Okay, and as you can see, we have lines pointing outwards on all of these uh, faces right here. Even on the inside, we can see there is a little blue line pointing outwards from this side face here. So that means the normals are pointing in the direction of these blue lines. Now let's press tab select the other arm and press tab and you'll see we don't really see any of those normal arrows but if we go into the drop down here and increase the size you'll see they start to poke out and what this is is in fact the faces from the up or the other side of the model pointing through okay so that means that this model here is inside out so what we need to do is we need to press f3 and we want to type recalculate, and you'll see we have recalculate outside right here. Hit enter, and as you can see, our normals have now been recalculated, and they are now pointing in the correct direction. We can press tab again, and to make this process faster, we're going to first of all go ahead and combine all of our models into a single mesh, okay? Because we don't want to have separate um, models here that we can accidentally move around. So I'm going to press A to select everything, and then go Control J to join them all. And as you can see here under cylinder, we now have a single mesh that we can select. Now, if I press tab to go to edit mode, you'll see that we have the normals here. Okay, on the left hand side here, they're all um, correct. But as you can see on the right hand side, these, norm these arrows are a lot shorter because they're poking through the entire model. So I'm gonna go A to select everything, F3, recalculate outside, and there we go. All of the normal directions have now been fixed. Um, we can bring this down a tiny bit here like so, and as you can see, all of the model's faces are now pointing in the same direction. Now, if we were to leave it how it was, um, throughout Blender, it generally would look the same, but once you import it then into a game engine or into some other software, um, you'll notice that these faces are gonna be very, very dark, and um, it'll look quite trippy because you're looking at the backside of the inside of the model, which, um, yeah, is something that is good to fix early on before you notice it, um, after you texture it, after you do everything, um, and then import it into your game engine. So we've got our model here, we've got everything um, set up correctly. We've even got it set up as a single mesh so we can move it around like that. Um, what we're gonna do now is just orientate it in our scene where we want. So I'm gonna get into a side view here. I'm gonna press G, I'm gonna hold shift so it snaps, and I'm just gonna have the feet sitting down like so. Okay, so we're just gonna make it so that the feet are basically sitting on the ground like so, just on the red line. Um, and what we then want to do is go over to the left-hand side and click on this little icon right here, which is going to bring up the move gizmo. And this basically shows us where the model's pivot point is. So if we rotate from here, as you can see, we're rotating based on the arm. 
but we want to set the pivot point down to the center here, okay? It's just general good practice to have the center of the model defined um, at the base of its feet. Um, when working with game engines and other software, um, it goes a long way and you don't have to then uh, find some work around to set it up properly. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna press F3 and we are going to go set origin, okay? And we're gonna go down to where it says origin to 3D cursor, which is this little circle right here. Hit enter. And as you can see, the move gizmo has now been set down at the base of our model's feet, okay? So if we wanna rotate it or modify it, it's gonna rotate and modify based off this um, pivot point. So there we go. We'll get everything there set up. Um, and now what we can do is begin the process of actually creating our rig, okay? Uh, one final thing, let's rename this one to our, um, let's go humanoid model. And now we're ready to begin. So in the next lesson, we're gonna go ahead and begin setting up our armature, okay? We're gonna set up our bones for all of our joints. And then from there, we're gonna go into weight painting. We're gonna make sure that all of the bones are behaving correctly. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next lesson. Hey everyone, and welcome back. In this lesson, we are gonna begin rigging our 3D character. So first of all, what do I mean by rigging? Well, in Blender and many other 3D software, rigging is basically like creating a skeleton for a 3D mesh. And the skeleton allows us to rotate and uh, modify the bones in order to rotate the rest of the mesh, okay? So the way it normally works is that you'll have um, a root here in the center, which basically acts as the um, center position or the main uh, bone of the structure. This will then branch off to the shoulders, to the elbows, to the wrists, etc. We then have the neck for the head. We then have the other arms. So we have the other shoulder, the other elbow, the other wrist. This also then goes down to the, um, the legs. Um, the knees and the ankles, okay? And these are basically um, the connections. So you can of course make this as complex or as simple as you wish. Uh, some 3D models will only have a handful of bones while others may have uh, quite a few as you might want to rig each individual finger joint, each individual toe joint. Really, it's entirely up to you, but for us, we're gonna keep it nice and simple, okay? We're just gonna have one joint for our hands and feet. So let's get started with creating our rig. So inside of Blender, a rig is known as an armature, okay? So we can go over to add and down to where it says armature right here. And this is gonna create our armature along with our first bone. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this up and position it right about here, okay? And press tab to go into edit mode. Now, the first problem is that our armature is inside of our character model so we can't actually see it so a way we can um, bypass this is by enabling x-ray mode i'm going to go to the top right corner here click on this little down arrow and select x-ray so now we can see through our model and we can select and modify our armature so this here is a bone okay now a bone on itself doesn't really do anything um instead what we need to do is connect other bones to it to create a sort of bone uh tree hierarchy in order to then uh, be able to move our arms have our body rotate which rotates the arms along with it we'll get into that so what we're going to do is we're going to select the top bone right here and we are going to press e to extrude and what this will do is create ourselves a new bone connected to the previous and we're gonna bring this up to the neck like so, okay? And then from here, we can press E again and move this into the head. So what we have done here is pretty much this bone right here is gonna be our chest. This bone is gonna be sort of our stomach or our center region. And this here is going to be our head. So now what we can do is from this center uh, one right here, or our root actually, we're gonna press E and bring this down and this is gonna act as our pelvis, okay? So that is the main center spine set up right here. Now we can move on to the arms. So for the arms, I'm gonna select the um, upper body chest bone right here, press E, extrude that over to the left arm like so, press E again to bring that over to the elbow and E again for the hand. And finally for our arm, we need to add one more bone which is gonna go into the hand like so. 
Okay, so now here we have our uh, shoulder bone, our elbow bone, and our hand bone right here. So let's go ahead and now duplicate these in order to flip them over to the other side. So I'm going to select all four of our bones here, Shift D, I'm then going to go Scale X negative 1, and we can then move it over like so. Okay, so by pressing G, then X to move it along the X axis, just like that. And what we need to do is actually connect this bone up, because as you can see right now, it's disconnected. So what we need to do is we need to select it, go over to the bone icon down here in the properties window, and under the relations uh, tab here, we just want to enable connected. And as you can see, it is now connected to this center bone right here. So everything should move like so. Okay, so we've got our arms, we've got our head, we've got our spine here. Now we need our legs. And as a bit of a challenge, I want you to go ahead and try setting up the legs, okay? It's done in pretty much the exact same way as with our arms, okay? So we're going to select this bone, extrude it, create our legs, and then create our other legs. So have a go at that, and I'll be right back to see how you're done. Okay, so I hope you had a go at that. Um, pretty much, we just need to press E. This is then going to extrude out like so. We can then press E again to create one for our knee, and then another one for our ankle and from our ankle we then want to extrude this out into our foot okay so here we have our foot joint here we have our knee joint and here we have our main upper leg joint okay and this is the connection to our leg and then to create our other leg we're just going to select all of these like so Control d scale by pressing s on the x-axis negative one okay and moving that over like so selecting this bone and enabling connected. Okay, so make sure then that this is all connected up like so. Okay, so when we, when we move this center bone here, um, it moves the, the root and the legs. Okay, so they're all connected. All right, and that is our rig set up and ready to go. In the next lesson, we are going to be looking at actually then um, combining this and merging it into our mesh so we can then start posing it. Um, we're going to give names to each of our bones and then going on into weight painting. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all then in the next lesson. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson we are going to be looking at how we can actually combine this armature to our mesh right here, okay? Because right now, this armature is a separate object from our mesh and modifying it isn't going to move our mesh around. So what we need to do is let's hop over into object mode by pressing tab. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our armature, hold shift and select our model, okay? Make sure it is in this order, okay? Select the armature first, then select the model. And from here, we can press control P and this is going to open up the parent window, okay? And basically, we can choose to parent this in different ways. What we're going to do is go over to Armature Deform and select With Automatic Weights, okay? So this is going to generate automatic weights, which is something we'll look at in a future lesson, okay? But for now, you can see over here, the armature has combined into a single object. And now we are pretty much ready to pose it and see how it works. So what we can do is we can go over to Object Mode. Oh, we need to select the armature go over to pose mode right here, and we can then select a bone, press R to rotate, and as you can see, we can now rotate the arm like so. We can rotate an elbow, and we can rotate the hand. We can then rotate this sort of upper body like so. We can rotate our legs, our knees, and our feet like so. Okay, so just make sure everything has uh, the ability to rotate the way that you want it to do. Um, but you may notice that with the arms, when we rotate it, it rotates the body along with it. So if we rotate the arms like this, it kind of looks a bit weird. That is something we will be fixing with weight painting. Um, same thing for the leg right here. It sort of morphs the body a bit, which is uh, not exactly what we want. So yeah, there we go. We've got our armature now combined to our mesh. Um, one more thing we are going to do is name our bones because right now if we open up our armature, open up pose and look into our bones here, you'll see that they are all named very different things, okay? And what we need to do is fix this by giving them names. And this is going to help us out when doing weight painting or just in general, um, some programs may be reading the bones for a specific direction or name. So it's good to give them a name. 
Okay, so first of all, we have um, this bone right here, which we can call the pelvis. This one right here, which we can call our spine. This one right here, which we can call our chest. We then have our neck. Okay. Uh, over here, we can have our, actually, no, we'll do this one first. This one is going to be our right-hand side because this is the, the, the direction that our model is looking. So this is going to be its right arm. And for that, what we're going to do is call this shoulder underscore R, okay? For shoulder underscore right. We then have elbow underscore R, and we then have wrist underscore R. Same thing for the left-hand side. Here we have shoulder underscore L, we have elbow underscore L, and wrist underscore L. Okay, uh, for these parts here, we are just going to rename this one to be upper arm underscore L, and this one is going to be upper arm underscore R. Uh, now, down here for our legs, this one here is going to be upper leg underscore R, we then have our uh, leg underscore R, we then have our knee underscore R, and our ankle underscore R. Same thing for the left hand side here. And there we go. So now over here inside of the hierarchy we can see we have our spine, upper arm L, inside of that shoulder L, elbow L and wrist L. Okay, same for everything else. Make sure that they are all got the correct naming. Okay, there we go. Uh, and from here, what we can do is a number of things. Okay, if you're happy with your um, model, you can go ahead, export it, add it to whatever uh, software you're using. But as you can see here, like I said, with the rotations on the arms, it is a bit weird on the upper body. So what we're going to do is modify the weight painting. So that is something we're going to be looking at in the next lesson. So I'll see you all then.